Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Fanshawe's Spring Open House. This is the end of the day, but an equally important session for you folks that are here because we're going to be talking about new Canadians and how we can help not only get you guys into your educational pathways, but help you be successful on the other end as well. So I do have with me some staff out of the English for Academic Purposes, as well as our Access Study programs today. But before we get started, I do want to knock down a couple housekeeping items. So while we're running this presentation today, I will be hiding out in the background monitoring the chat box, but I also encourage you guys, if you have questions, just post them in that question panel. You will see it in the control panel, just above the chat box option. At the end of today's presentation, we will have a Q&A, so uh, certainly as we go, I'm sure a lot of that information is gonna get covered before we get there, uh, but we will regroup at the end. So with that said, folks, again, welcome to the presentation, and I'm gonna turn it over to Rick to get started. You ready, Rick? Yep, let's go. All right. Well, welcome everybody. And I just, you know, whatever stage you're at in your settlement process, I want to welcome you to this seminar. I want to welcome you to Canada. And I want to thank you for your interest to Fanshawe College. And uh, we're here to support you in your journey. And we're also here as, you know, just resources for your next kind of educational step. Or even if it's just, uh, or if you're in that big step of learning the English language. So thank you. So my name is Rick Townend. I am an academic advisor in Access Studies, and I work um, in conjunction with a lot of programs at the college, but primarily we work with uh, bringing the college to the community and helping individuals meet the academic requirements to get to college. Um, but today I want to present to you a professional program that we have at the college. Um, and it, uh, it can help newcomers establish some employment links. So I'm going to ask Tina to go hit the next slide. Excellent. So this is just asking, you know, this is making reference to how the culture between two different countries is vastly different. And one of the things that we recognize at Fanshawe is that, you know, trying to establish some uh, networks in the occupation that you may have left in your home country, in this country is a real challenge. So the next one, you know. So in this whole um, seminar today, we're going to try and answer all these questions. We're going to ask, you know, try and ask or answer the question, do you need specific training in a particular occupation? Or do you need help learning the language? Or do you need to understand the academic skills and rigors of college? And uh, throughout this whole seminar, we're going to try and uh, accomplish that for you. Okay, next. So I work, like I said, in Access Studies. We're actually located when it's during face-to-face -face time. We're downtown. But today we're coming to you virtually. We're happy to do that. This is just a little picture of, you know, where our, our, our home base would be in face-to-face in -face times. But I, everything I'm going to present to you today, um, I want you to be aware that we run virtually through the class, through, through the computer. So all of our programs currently are, are virtual. Go ahead, Tina, next. You can fill this screen right up, Tina. There's about a couple more tabs on it. Oh, beautiful. So I took this article from the Globe and Mail maybe about five years ago now. Um, and for those of you maybe learning the language, I'll explain a little bit more to it. But I really think it helps summarizes the struggles that new Canadians have when they're making their way through the settlement process. Because for many, they feel like they've left really good jobs at home, really good careers. They had a, maybe if they were working in business or they were working in, uh, in any part of the sector, one of the sectors, uh, they felt like they had a network of people built up that they could kind of go to. And so this little quote here that basically says, it feels like I'm starting over, 
uh, for a lot of people, they feel like uh, they have to regain their confidence as well. And, uh, you know, coming from another country into Canada, transitioning into the workforce can be very challenging and it can be a timely process. But what I want you to know is that our program and many other supports in London respect the kind of experience that you bring to us. We, we respect the kind of qualifications you have in your home country and we respect the kind of experience. Of course, there are transition issues and there are equivalency issues. Uh, but one of the things we do in our program is we try and help you solve that. Go next. So what I'm going to present to you is called OSLT, or it's better known as Occupational Specific Language Training. And because that's a full mouthful, I'm just going to continue to say OSLT from this point forward. So what does it do? It helps students to have better communication with people in the work environment. I know particularly the clients, but also specifically, you know, supervisors, your other colleagues. Um, and it also helps you understand the culture in Canada and, you know, why things may be different and, uh, and how things are perceived. I find with newcomers that when they learn the level of perception that's going on, their strength in order to kind of secure employment increases a tremendous amount. So we try and help you understand that workplace culture. And we look at, you know, what are strong interviewing skills in Canada? What are networking and job search skills? And then what are the, what are the necessary communication skills? You know, how do we communicate? So, so, you know, typically when we use particular types of platforms, we're very professional all the time. So if we write something or we email something, we're typically very, very professional with that correspondence. You know what, if we text something, it can be very short, it can be very different. So understanding the kind of nuances to those kind of things uh, is unique. Go next. You can fill this screen up. So you should be aware uh, that OSLT is funded by Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, and it's free for all of those people who qualify. So, and it has been developed by the Ontario Colleges, Colleges Ontario, and it's been developed for specifically these reasons, employment, to gain work experience, uh, to gain work sector experience, to get a certified course that you can include on your resume, it's 180 hours, and it's designed to draw on the knowledge and skills that you already have from your home country. So from IRCC's perspective, they look at this as a language support, but they also look at this as an employment support for you. And this, you know, you would be suitable for these courses after you've kind of moved down the continuum in, um, in, uh, in the settlement experience and gained some strong skills, right? Gained some strong language skills. So go next, if you don't mind, Tina. So here's what the eligibility is. Um, quite often we will get uh, new immigrants that are now new Canadians, and so they're citizens. So this program is not for citizens. This is for permanent residents or protected persons. And they've had to acquire the language uh, level of at least benchmark five before they can come to us, right? So Canadian lang language benchmark. And some of you may have already taken an assessment with the Cross-Cultural Learner Center. And some of you may be in the, in the journey of learning English. And I know uh, Adair and Tina are gonna be presenting that to you in a couple minutes here. But what's necessary in order to take some of our courses is to have the background in your work experience or in your, uh, or your education experience. And we offer, we offer courses in these three areas. So our business sector is very popular. We help entrepreneurs, we help uh, previous managers, we help lots of people who were in accounting, marketing, finance. Um, and we designed, we have the business courses designed specifically to kind of have, have, have people get a, a Canadian culture experience. We also have courses in technology. And I've, if I can just get you to go back for a second, we also have some in, in health sciences, you know, in southwestern Ontario, we have a lot of health science employment opportunities. And if there's a really good chance that if you've come from your country with credentials, you'll find a job here. But it'll be really challenging at first to kind of understand 
the nuances of the workplace. So that's one thing that our, our courses can help you with. And then lastly, I have this video, but I, I, it's not interfaced for our webinar today, but it will be sent to, uh, you know, through the PowerPoint link that you can refer to and you can go back. But one of the good things about the video is it just kind of summarizes mostly kind of where I've been right, with this uh, presentation. So let me stop there and see if anybody has any questions. Nothing's come through so far, Rick. Okay, no worries. I'm, I'm monitoring it in the background, keep reaching out and certainly right. uh, as we go, I'll pop it in. Well, you know what, um, is there, um, one of the things I didn't do here is I didn't put my contact information. Is there, is, we, do we have, do I have the capability of putting that in the chat here? Let me see. Absolutely, Rick, you can. Okay, so uh, I just want to include my phone number because we help a lot of students uh, gain uh, access to the college for academic support and you're more than welcome to call it. And then also to, I'll leave my email for as follow-up for anybody who is interested in, uh, in um, you know having a more intimate uh, session or understanding with regards to our courses. So you know what? Again, I want to welcome you and thank you for your support to uh, to us today, and and wish you good luck on your journey. All right. Th thanks, Rick. I think that's we're we're coming to our part now, Adair, and uh, so. We're the English Language Institute, and we um, are a school at Pancha College that works with students to help prepare them for English for academic purposes. And uh, I'll start off maybe, uh, Adair, and you can we can go alternate maybe here. Sure. First of all, we'll, we'll talk about uh, our um, GAP5 students, because if you are a domestic student, um, you would be considered, that is living here in Canada full time, you would be considered a GAP 5 student in the language of Fancha College. So our GAP 5 program is called English for Academic Purposes or EAP and it is different from ESL in that it is specifically preparing students for academic English. So to take a course at Fancha or, or Western or another college, and it is for permanent residency. And, and you can see that uh, here on the right, we have a picture of one of our students who just finished our program, was with us for a couple of terms, and he was tuning in from the Dominican Republic. So as you know, the program is virtual right now and it will continue to be virtual for a while, but we have um, been doing quite well in our virtual world. And Zerelki uh, allowed us to use this picture because he had a great experience here and he is now in his post-secondary program at Fancha College. So GAP5 students and our international students, they are in the same classroom, they work together in the same way, everything is similar. We just have a different language for our domestic students just because they are, a, we treat them differently in the sense of our uh, administrative role. But in the classroom, they blend all together. And we're very proud. We have many, many different cultures, domestic and international. I think one time not long ago, we counted up to 52 different cultures within our um, within our program and we're really proud of that. Good. So um, the, the GAP5 classes and schedule uh, is, is uh, same of course uh, we think of as the EAP program and in, in, in general we've got a kind of a comical uh, bunch of folks here this is one of a classroom uh, probably from the uh, uh, from the fall here, but it's um, the same schedule that you would have as if you were attending um, in person. And in fact, uh, one should think of this as a full-time program, 25 hours a week, uh, running from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon. Now that doesn't mean you're sitting staring at a computer all that time, and it will vary from term to term, 
uh, what times you are actually um, spending on online or on camera, but you can expect to do the same amount of work as if you were um, in the, the regular um, in-person class. So we're going to be online for a while yet, at least until Christmas. Uh, but um, we've been doing this for a year and it's, uh, I have to say it's working rather well. And uh, we have four components um, as, we, as we would. Uh, and all the content stays the same, of course, uh, from uh, in-person to now. So um, core are, is the um, sort of the essence of um, academic purposes English, uh, reading, writing, and grammar and all that stuff. Uh, listening and speaking is, well, listening and speaking. It's an opportunity to apply um, your, your, um, the skills you, you learn in a, a speaking and listening format as well to get ready for the post-secondary classroom. So there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of the content we use will uh, serve you well as you progress into your career program. Applied, another opportunity to use the language you're learning uh, you may uh, participate in making a video or a radio play or read a book together or there's um, it's basically using the skills and the skill level you've reached uh, in, in a way that uh, is practical and applied. And the computer session is uh, back in the good old days, you would actually have computer time blocked out for you and other EAPA students in the computer lab. Um, online, uh, we're available in the same way. But of course, you don't have to go to the lab. You just have to go to your own uh, laptop on your kitchen table. Three start dates a year for domestic students, uh, September, January, and May. And of course, that, that May entry point is coming up now. And so we are dealing with uh, applications and are waiting for yours if you, if you want to join. Excellent. OK, so um, this picture shows to the top right, it shows one of our, uh, um, in our workshops in our last uh, week, we have a series of different activities set out for students between their test and their new new start date. And we have a, a, a few of our graduates that have tuned in to have a little bit of an, a discussion panel for our current students. So uh, we like to think of our um, of our program, our EAP program, as your home, your home base for where you start, and that students often come back. And we do a lot of extracurricular like speaking circles. Uh, we, I think we have eight different speaking times outside of class. So you can find a good community here too. The lower picture demonstrates one of our students who just graduated within level nine and 10 and is now in his aviation program. And this is his first flight. And he still comes to our speaking circles. In fact, I saw him just yesterday. So um, we are really, we, we really like to think of our program as sort of that beginning up fanshawe to make you very comfortable here and to make you feel like you're at home as you go into post-secondary prepares you for as i said fanshawe western and um other colleges as well <clears throat> i mentioned that we have conversation circles and reading and writing workshops uh, we have some extra supports like one-on-one -on -one tutoring and all of these things are included in your tuition so we like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop and we can we can definitely provide extras for you while you're here Good. the cost well it's uh well isn't this exact number sometimes uh it's a, but you can count on as a domestic student uh spending about two thousand uh, dollars Per semester. Now that is two levels. So level five and level six together, that would be uh, your approximate cost. You, of course, uh, there there would be some books. Um, some levels actually have very few books for you to buy. This is uh, something that is uh, changing these days. But uh, it'll depend on your level. So you, and you can't buy your books until you know your level anyhow. So that's um, something that you can investigate. Um, the application fee for anyone uh, attending a community college in Ontario is $95, and that's your starting point. Uh, OntarioColleges.ca is the website, um, and then to become an applicant, and that uh, will serve you for any applications you will make anywhere in any program for a period of one year. And then you are eligible to get OSAP um, for a, a language program. Um, now, it's only for eight months or a total of uh, two semesters, 
or in the EAP world, four terms. And so if you were to join now in level five, uh, you would do levels five and six in, uh, in the summer. And then starting in September, you could do level seven and eight. And you could be ready for your uh, program uh, starting next January. But those eight months is all that OSAP will cover. So if your level was lower than five, we'd have to say um, you have two choices. Um, you'd have to pay for that first term yourself somehow because OSAP won't cover students starting uh, lower than level five or um, you, or wait until you uh, you know study somewhere else until you can bring your level up. But that's one of the reasons we do the placement test to let students know where they stand. But uh, if you come in at level five or higher, then uh, all is good and you will be eligible for OSAP for studying English for eight months. And a lot of people that dare start in the community learning English for free, and then they um, finish their English before uh, attending a program at Fanshawe. So it, it works out well if you uh, continue your English until you're at level five. And, and usually um, a beginning part with point with us is to start your testing anyway. So that'll give you a, uh, an idea of what level you're at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's best. I mean, you'll have an idea if you're in the community and you're doing a CLB is about five or six, then uh, it, it may be time or it's an ex there are excellent programs in the community. And um, our mm -hmm. focus is uh, English for academic purposes. So if there's a point at which you want to jump uh, programs where you want to study with uh, more specifically focused on starting a career program at Fanshawe, that's when you, you'll be thinking of Fanshawe. But for general survival English, as they say, then the community does an excellent job and it's where you should be um, until it is time to, to switch. So that's as often the message we have to deliver for people who test uh, as a beginner. We'll say please take advantage of the free community programs and then we'll see you in maybe six months or a year when, when you're ready great okay so we mentioned this a little bit um osap is available for four levels or two semesters and uh that um no osap is allowed under level five but that's when you should be in the community and uh thinking of Fanshawe College as your finishing school, some people say. It really does help to prepare you to do at least um, one semester or two levels before you start your placement program. So many students have come to me and said, you know, I, I'm so glad I, I did ESL at Fanshawe, even though, you know, my English was pretty good. I feel like it prepared me to really do well at my Fanshawe program because I know the, the um, computer system they use, the software, I knew what the expectations were with their research essays and that kind of thing. So it really does help you to, to do uh, Fanshawe for that semester. Now, how do we figure out what level you are? Uh, good question. We, have a placement test and it's actually the same placement test that you would write if the college were open on a, on a normal basis um, students will all arrive and go into a computer lab and do a test that takes usually uh, between one and two hours and that will test their listening the reading and grammar they wear headphones and they use a keyboard and then we ask them to write a short essay about uh, uh, in some interesting, uh, easily accessible topic like a favorite relative or a city you visited or something. And then a speaking interview. And then we take those three measures and come up with what we think is the best place for you to start. And uh, we do the same thing now. Um, this We have the exact same computer test. We also ask for a writing sample. And we do all this by email and online. And then um, towards the end of the process, we uh, have a conversation with the teacher. And once again, uh, we'll be placed based on, uh, on those measures. Uh, you can also uh, start with a, a standardized test score like IELTS. If you, for example, have IELTS 5.5, you're in level seven, no questions asked. And we've discovered that that's a good measure as well. So that's a, uh, another way. There is also equivalencies for TOEFL or Duolingo. You can enter that way. So we want to get you in the right level. If you ended up in the wrong level for some reason, we would uh, have that conversation then. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that everyone is 
studying at the appropriate level, not too high and not too low. Sometimes it's uh, it's difficult, but uh, I generally we've been quite successful in, in making those placements. And this picture here on the right shows a picture of one of our conversation circles or speaking circles that we have regularly. And, you know, we might have 25 people come in uh, in the morning or an after class, and then we divide them into small groups. And I'm looking at this picture and I'm thinking all of these students now have finished their program and are at their EAP program and are now into post-secondary, except one who is awaiting the program. And they were all actually pretty good speakers, but they chose to come in to not only improve their speaking, but to build friendships and connections with other people. So they have a group here of people who are committed to learning the language and the culture and, and are their support group. And so I, we, we, we um, add a, a lot of emphasis on this because it is such a, a valuable extra in our, in our program. So to sign up for that placement test, just email gap5 at fanshawc.ca. You'll get an automatic reply and it'll tell you everything you need to do. But the process involves getting, you'll get an email from uh, from my colleague Claire inviting you to do the test. And since we're getting close to that point, like uh, about five more weeks before the next term starts, then um, th respond uh, as soon, sooner than later to get this process moving. Okay, I think that's all we uh, wanted to focus on today. I don't know if there are any questions. I see that we have about 16 people in the audience. And so we have great, uh, I, hope, I hope that we answered all your questions. Hey folks, I do have a couple questions that came in and I got a couple, they might've been covered, but you know, people are paying attention and maybe missed something along the way. Um, I do want to point out to a gentleman that did ask, what is the difference between IELTS and Fanshawe's English training? If you look in the chat box, I did post a link to a chart that we host on our international page that will break down the various English tests and what they would compare to in terms of a, an English for academic purposes level. So it's a good starting point, but absolutely hit up that gap5 at fanshawc.ca because that will get you an accurate answer. But the first can question add, that I... Greg, can we just add to that that we do have an IELTS uh, preparation program. And if you want more information about that IELTS preparation program, you, you can use that GAP5 email that we just um, had on the screen. And we, although we do uh, encourage, there are different ways of accessing programs, you might also want to consider that one term of preparation before going into your program, just so you feel confident in your skills and prepared for learning a, learning a, a program in a completely, in, in a new language. That's a, that's a big challenge. Absolutely. So a gentleman has asked, um, specifically, is there a cost for the placement test? And when is the actual next test? So I know we mentioned five weeks out. I believe there is an official date though. No. The test is happening now. Uh, and uh, if you were to uh, start the process by emailing gap5 at fanshawc.ca, one of the first things that would happen, uh, would you'd be get an invitation to test from my colleague, Claire Marin. Um, that uh, there is no cost to the student, there is a cost to us, uh, and so we uh, do encourage people uh, to come to go to the testing process when you're fairly certain you want to take our program. That's, uh, but there's uh, there's no cost. Uh, now the test is only pertinent to us. Like we will uh, even if you test very high, if you wanted to enter a, a program at Fanshawe, you would still need either a standardized test score or an additional official uh, proof of your. Uh, uh, of your standing of your skills you wouldn't be able to use our placement test to enter a, a career program but uh, it is a very, a very finely tuned assessment test that gives us a very good idea and you a good idea of your skills and what you need to work on excellent so here's a good question does finishing gap five or english for academic purposes guarantee me entry into a program a post-secondary program after that is a, that is a good question 
And in, in terms of um, getting into a Fanshawe program, as long as you meet the requirements of level eight, most programs, our diploma programs are a level eight at 80%. Um, some of our programs, healthcare and our at any of our graduate programs are level nine, 80%. And then if you're going on to Western or some of our affiliates, they would be at a level 10, 80%. So as long as you meet those requirements, absolutely, you would be well prepared and we're, we would be, you, would, you would be confident in your language, English to yeah. start a program. Of course, that's the language portion of your of the your the credentials you need. Uh, there are other thing other factors as well, and I'm not sure if that's what the the questioner had was getting to. But of course, uh, some programs are very very busy, so uh, you may mm -hmm. prove your English, and your English will no longer be an issue. But there'll still be uh, the rest of your application, your preparation. Uh, uh, do you have, like, for example, some you, there may be mathematics skills required or something uh, that, of course, will have to be uh, be met, and and just room in the program. Some programs there's a thousand applicants for a hundred spots, so uh, you can have perfect English but still miss out because of other criteria. But you will not be rejected because of English if you meet the English criteria as specified in the requirements for the program. Absolutely. And for the folks out there, I did post a link to English language requirements and how they break down across all our programs for the various assessments, including if you took English for academic purposes in GAP 5. It's always important to know, though, that every program might have different requirements. So Adair did mention what we would refer to as called competitive programs. Even if it was a diploma that you might qualify with English at a certain level for a broadcast or a business diploma, the competitive programs will always have a different requirement. So, so it's definitely take your time, visit those program pages. They will have admission requirement links that also has your English language as well as the other academic courses you would need to get into a program. Okay, moving on. Uh, if I was struggling in English for academic purposes or an English training program, is there other supports within the college that I can search it? That's an excellent question. And I, I would like to say a big yes with an exclamation mark because we do have um, a great uh, program within our college around face-to-face, uh, one-on-one -on -one, uh, professional tutoring. We have, uh, we have peer tutoring, and we also have um, workshops uh, during your time when you're not in classes and extra speaking. So yeah, we have a lot of extra support for people. Excellent. So I've started English for Academic Purposes, but now I just can't afford to continue or I have some other things that have popped up in life, can I come back later? And if so, how long of a window do I have to complete the program? If you have reached level six, you are always a level six student. I mean, you will never have to go lower than that. If you have passed level six with 70% and you, <clears throat> but instead of going to level seven, you went off to other something else in your life, you can always come back and do level seven. So you're, uh, uh, credentials do not uh, die. Uh, not not like the IELTS test. You have to refresh that after two years. So if you finish our program and you're ready for you have a your level eight eighty percent and you go do something else, you you're still el eligible if you came back to Fanshawe. So you're wherever you are, you can always pick up again, no problem. Having said that, if you failed level five, we'd ask, probably ask you to do a level five again, or at least do the assessment test again to see if maybe you've learned something else in the meantime. So we, we really want to make sure that people are in the level they belong. That's a common situation that happens, right? Because life happens and sometimes children or whatever that, but we definitely um, will accept you back into that, that same level for sure. Excellent. And I think Adair touched on something else that's important for the audience out there. If you were approaching your eligibility by completing an English assessment like an IELTS or a TOEFLs, it has to be within the last two calendar years in order for it to be current and accepted. If it isn't within the last two calendar years, 
you would either have to take another assessment or approach the English training. And this is our last question for today, folks. And then when everybody can get back to their Saturdays and you know, enjoy that nice weather. I think it's nicer, a little bit nicer out now. Folks just want to know when the next EAP and GAP5 programs begin. When does the official program begin next? First day of classes is May 10th. So where we are handling applications now. Um, we don't leave it too long, uh, but it is a sort of program you can you could you know never even have thought about until this moment and be successfully registered and in class by May 10th. We could, that process happens quickly. Get to OntarioColleges.ca and uh, start that application process. Be ready to pay your 95 bucks there and uh, jump through uh, those hoops. Get that process. But it does. It's uh, there's lots of uh, of help out there to help you get that uh, process underway um, you know every, each each stage you can start it all at the same time too call you know email gap5 get your testing going go to osap to start inquiring about funding go to ontario colleges start the application it all you know, they all work together but uh, start now yeah that i was just going to say that and um, that seems like may 10th it's far off but there it there are um there is a process for each part of the application. So we would encourage you to do this sooner than, than later. So um, by the, by the uh, middle of April for sure, or, or sooner. Good. Absolutely. And for the folks out there, I did post the link, fanshawc.ca slash connect. If you're having troubles, you need some support with applications, or you just need to be point pointed in the right direction to get connected with one of these folks or our admissions office or whatever it is, we can help you there. So definitely hit that up there. You can book a private appointment. Uh, there'll also be some emails that you can reach out to. But I also posted that GAP5 email. Take a screen grab, have it in your back pocket uh, because it's important for you folks. That's a good way to get connected as well always. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it. So I appreciate everybody spending some time with this on the Saturday. I appreciate our panelists for coming in and sharing their knowledge. And like I said, reach out if you have some uh, questions that you need answered, some support. We're always here to help. We want to make sure that you're not only successful getting into Canada, but also being set up so that you can have a successful life. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks, all. Hope to see you. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Thank you.